equations and inequalities. The absolute value of x is the distance x is away from zero on the number line. The absolute value of a number is always positive. Because we're talking about distance, the number always has to be positive. We never talk about distance or length in terms of negative numbers. You would never say that you live negative four miles away from the school or that you're negative five feet and six inches tall. Okay? We always talk about distance and length in terms of positives. So in example one, we have this equation that says the absolute value of x equals positive five. Therefore, x has to be positive five or x could also be negative five because positive five and negative five are the only values that have a distance of five away from zero on the number line. Example two says that the absolute value of x is equal to negative seven. Now, there's no value for x that makes this equation true because the absolute value of a number cannot be negative. So if we can't have an absolute value that is negative, this is an impossible equation to solve. So let's take some steps in solving an absolute value equation. Step number one, we need to isolate the absolute value expression on one side of the equation. So here's our absolute value expression. I'm just going to highlight the absolute values. So we want to get this by itself. And so for the meantime, just think of them as parentheses. So we want to get rid of the minus or the positive one by subtracting one on both sides. Then we're left with two times the absolute value of three X minus four equals five minus one, which is four. Oops, forgot my second absolute value symbol. Now, to get the absolute value symbol and what's inside by itself, we have a two multiplied by it. So we want to divide by two on both sides to cancel out that two, and then we'll be left with absolute value 3x minus four. And then absolute value equals four divided by two gives us two. So that was step number one. I'm gonna change colors for step number two. It says, step number two, remove the absolute value symbols and create two different equations. The first equation is gonna be the original. So all I'm gonna do is rewrite this without the absolute value symbols. Three X minus four equals two. The second equation we need to write is the original equation but take the opposite answer. So we wanna write this side the same, 3x minus four, and then it says take the opposite answer. So instead of a positive two, we're gonna make this negative two. Now we have our two different equations and we've finished step number two. Now let's lead into step number three. Solve each equation for the unknown variable. So I'm gonna solve these equations separately, so I'm just gonna put a little separation mark there. So to solve for x, first I wanna add four to both sides. Those cancel, and we're left with three x equals six. And then to isolate x, since it's three times x, we wanna divide by three on both sides cancel that out and we're left with x equals six divided by three is two. Now let's solve the other equation. So again, we need to isolate x. So first, let's get rid of negative four by adding four to both sides. And then on this side, we have three x. And then negative two plus four gives us a positive two and then we want to divide by 3 and we get x equals and we're just going to have an answer of 2 thirds over here. So we've solved both equations 
and finish step three. Now on to step four, write your, write your final answers. So for our final answer, we just have two different answers for x. So we're gonna say x equals, and just out of habit, I'm just gonna put the smaller number first, 2 thirds, comma, two. So those are my two different answers for x. So if I wanted to check my answers, I would just take x equals 2 thirds, substitute that back into the original equation, and when I simplify this left side, I should get 5 as an answer. If I take positive 2 and substitute it in for x and simplify, I should also get 5 for an answer. So these are my two answers in solving this absolute value equation. Now I want you to pause and try just example 1. So follow your steps and work out example 1, and when you finish example 1, check back with me and see if you got it right. Now with example 1, step 1 in our solving absolute value equations didn't really apply because the absolute value is already isolated. So hopefully you were able to move straight into the two different equations. First, the original without the absolute value, 2x minus 5 equals 9. And then the second equation, the same equation without the absolute values, but with a negative answer. So 2x minus 5 equals negative 9. Then when you solve those two, you should get x equals 7 and x equals negative 2, giving you a final answer of x equals negative 2 and 7. If you made a mistake, pause and check your work with mine and see where you might have gone wrong. Now, I want you to go ahead and pause. Try example two and example three. Those are going to involve using step one, okay? Example two is one step, and then example two is all, or example two is one step, and example three is also a step. So try those and check back with me. So if you followed our steps carefully, then for example two, you should have gotten x equals negative three, and negative 8. For example 3, you should have gotten x equals negative 7 over 5 and negative 13 over 5. Hopefully those are the answers you got. If you didn't, go ahead and pause. And remember, I laid out each of my steps one at a time, so double check your work with mine and see where you might have made a mistake. Next we're going to talk about solving absolute value inequalities. Now, solving absolute value inequalities are very, very similar to solving absolute value equations. There's one difference in that we have an inequality symbol instead of an equal sign. So our first step is actually going to be the same. We need to isolate the absolute value expression on one side of the inequality. So again, here's our absolute values. And so we want to isolate that first. So let's add 3 to both sides. That cancels. Now we're left with 4. Absolute value of 2x plus 5. Less than or equal to 12. Now remember, as you're writing, don't let your absolute value signs become 1s. So don't think this is 12x plus 51. Okay, be careful about that. Now we have this 4 multiplied on the outside, so we want to divide both sides by 4 so that we can cancel that out. And then we're left with absolute value 2x plus 5 absolute value less than or equal to 12 divided by 4 is 3. So there's step 1. Okay, now moving on to step 2. We need to remove the absolute value symbols and create two different inequalities, which is just like what we did with the equations. The first one is going to be the original inequality. So we have 2x plus 5 without absolute values less than or equal to 3. Now, this step 2 differs slightly from the equation. We have to write the original inequality and we still need to take the opposite answer, but there's one extra step. We need to make sure we flip the sign also. So 
again, I'm just going to make that little separation. We have 2x plus 5, dropping the absolute value. And then we do make the answer negative, so that positive 3 needs to become a negative 3. But the less than or equal, we need to flip that the other direction, so it becomes greater than or equal to. Okay, So that's the one extra step that we have with absolute value inequalities versus equations. So we've done step two. Now move on to step three. Solve each inequality for the unknown variable. So again, this is like before. We just solve our inequalities. Subtract five from both sides. So then we have two x less than or equal to negative two. And then we want to divide by two to isolate the variable. So then we get x less than or equal to negative 1. And then there's one answer. Now let's go over and solve our second one. So again, subtract 5 from both sides. Those cancel, and we have 2x greater than or equal to negative 8. And we want to divide by 2. So those cancel, and we're left with x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And here's our other answer. So now we're done with step 3. Moving on to step 4. Step 4 is extra in solving absolute value inequalities that we don't have in the absolute value equations. We actually need to combine these two answers for one final answer. So we need to graph our answers on a number line first. So we're going to create a number line. okay? And then we want the range to go from negative 1 to negative 4. So negative 4 is smaller, so we'll start that on the left side. Then negative 3, negative 2, and then negative 1. Okay? Now, I'm going to use a tool to just kind of highlight um, the different options. X, equals, X is less than or equal to negative 1. The or equal to part tells us it's a solid circle. Okay, And then we actually want all the X values, all the numbers that are smaller than negative 1. Now the way we know it's all the ones smaller, remember, whenever you see that if you get confused about whether it's less than or greater than, I want you to think about it this way. Think about it like an alligator mouth, okay? So the alligator mouth is open and it's always trying to eat the bigger number, okay? So if it's open this way, that means negative 1 is going to be bigger than anything that's x. So that means x has to be all the numbers smaller than negative 1. So I want all the numbers that are smaller the negative one in this direction, okay? Now, let's take a look at our second answer. X is greater than or equal to negative four. So again, the or equal to tells us it's, pos it's a solid circle. And then the alligator mouth is open towards the X, so we want all the numbers bigger than negative four, which are all the numbers this way, okay? Now, Sorry, my arrow got a little messed up. So these two overlap, and we actually only want the overlap of those two sets of numbers. So we want all the numbers that are bigger than negative 4, but smaller than negative 1. So the way we're going to write that is negative 4 is going to be smaller than the numbers that we want, or equal to but all the numbers we want also have to be smaller than negative 1. So x is bigger than negative 4, but x is smaller than negative 1. And it can equal negative 4 or negative 1. Okay? So whenever they overlap, you only want the numbers that are part of that overlap. So we've actually done step 4 and step 5. Now, in solving the following absolute value inequalities, just to get a little practice, try example one first. This is a little more basic. So try to follow all the steps we did before 
do this one, and then when you're finished, check back with me before we move on to example two and three. So hopefully the first step that you did was to drop the absolute values and then write your first inequality, 2x plus 7 less than 11. And then when you solve this, you should get x is less than positive 2. And then you also have to solve your second inequality, 2x plus 7. Flip that sign, greater than, and make your answer the opposite, negative 11. And when you solve that, you should get x is greater than negative 9. So when you graph those on the number line, they're facing towards each other, which means you're going to have a combined inequality. So you have negative 9 is less than x is less than 2. So remember, the biggest number will be on the right side, the smaller number is on the left, and then the alligator mouse should always be facing the bigger numbers towards the right. So I want you to go ahead and try example 2 and example 3. Now don't forget about this extra step in each of those before you can drop the absolute values and create your two different inequalities. So try those and check back with me when you're finished. Now for number 2, that first step is to divide both sides by negative 3. And then once you do that, you get absolute value of 2x plus 1 close the absolute value and then remember when you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number you have to switch that sign so we flip the sign the other way and then 15 divided by negative 3 gives us negative 5 now before we proceed breaking this up into two different inequalities and then looking for our answer I need you to think with me for a second here when you take the absolute value of a number we always end up with a positive number, right? Because absolute values are always positive. Now if you have a positive number, is it possible for that positive number to be less than or equal to negative 5? No, that's impossible. There are no negative numbers that are, or no positive numbers that are less than negative 5. So because this is an impossible situation, your answer is no solution. So be careful because you could split this into the two inequalities and work and find an answer, but your answer wouldn't make sense because this already is an impossible problem. Okay. Now the second one, we need to subtract 2 from both sides first, and then we have isolated the absolute value, so we get your two different inequalities, x minus 9 greater than or equal to 21, which gives us x is greater than or equal to 30, and then our other inequality, x minus 9, flip the sign, less than or equal to, make it negative, negative 21, and we get x is less than or equal to negative 12. Now, when we plot those on our number line, our arrows end up going in opposite directions. So what this tells us is all the numbers that are less than or equal to negative 12 work, but also all the numbers greater than or equal to 30 work. So the numbers in between don't. So when the arrows are facing in opposite directions, you just want to write both restrictions, both of those inequalities, and combine them using an OR. So remember, if they're facing each other and they overlap, you're going to combine them. If they're going in opposite directions, combine them with an OR. And if you run into a situation like example number two, it's going to be no solution. That's all. Submit any questions you have on the website.